this is where this is a time when it is critical you know, that, that we, we act as leaders because everyone is looking at us. Welcome to the Vibrant Leadership Podcast. Hello, everybody. My name is Nicole Greer, and welcome to the Vibrant Leadership Podcast. Today, I have a great, great longtime friend and colleague, Rick Meekins, on the show today. He's the managing partner at Epiphany Business Consulting, and he is dedicated to helping business owners figure it all out. He helps people build extraordinary companies, and he's been a business consultant for over 15 years, and I think I've known him all 15 of those years. Uh, He is so passionate and he is uh, somebody who loves to work with vision oriented people. Like, you know, if, if you have a little dream you want to make happen, a business you want to start, a business you want to grow, Rick is the guy to talk to. And his mission is to educate, equip, and inspire people to pursue extraordinary goals. And his vision in life is to help people become more self-sufficient. And that sounds like a path workshop mission statement, if I have ever heard one. Is that where that came from? (laughs) Yeah, so uh, we will have to talk about that. We will have to talk about that. But uh, first question is, like, how are you surviving 2020, COVID, elections, everything? You're down in Atlanta. What is going on? Wow. Wow. Yeah. COVID. COVID. This is a you know, it's 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 it was definitely not on my planning. I mean, I, I think I spent a lot of time uh, planning for 2020. You know, back in uh, late 2019, you know, early 2020, it's like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna, and then COVID hits. You know, and it's just right. like everything goes left. You know, it's just like, okay, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do differently? Um, it was it was really interesting. I uh, I uh, uh, had to go out. I was uh, doing a like a men's Bible study. Um, you know, shortly after, I, you might say, like, uh, we started getting released a little bit from from uh, from quarantine. And uh, so I go and I didn't really get permission to go, you know, from it was like, I was, exactly? driving, I was like, but from, from the wife, of course, oh, okay. the boss. Just everybody be clear. <laughs> everybody be clear. It wasn't your executive assistant. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It was it was the real boss. It was the real boss. That's right. And so you know, I'm like driving away. I'm like, bye. I'll see you later. You know, and and like I see like this look of horror like on her face as I look in the mirror. It's like, but I ha- I have to do Bible study. You know, this is for Jesus. You right, right. I mean? <laughs> so you know, I, I meet with the guys, and you know, I, I see a couple of missed calls on my phone, and you know, a little little bit of sweat, you know, starts to come down. But you know. And then I am informed, you know, uh, as I'm approaching the house that I cannot return to the house until I'm absolutely COVID free, you know, so I had to go out and I had to get a, uh, had to get a COVID test and come back before I could uh, 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 get back to, get back to the new normal as, as we call it now. But uh, yeah, outside of that, I mean, everybody's every, you know, for the most part, uh, everyone stayed, uh, stayed healthy. We actually had uh, two team members um, that actually did get uh, that did did contract uh, COVID, but outside of that, uh, yeah, we have we we've been safe. We've been safe. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And despite all that, you are actually growing your business, uh, even though things aren't doing well out there in the world. Um, it seems like right now is really the time when business owners need a consultant to come in and help them and advise them and get a strategic plan together that trumps the you know the late version from 2019 right yes absolutely absolutely yeah it's 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 been it's really been a an amazing year it was um it, it actually did start off a little bit slower um for us than, than i had anticipated but you know we had this this mission for the year if you will to 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 create jobs essentially you know and this was you know i mean the thinking was you know okay we're going to help other companies create jobs but you know what, believe it or not, regardless of the pandemic, I mean, we've actually onboarded at least one person every month. We actually onboarded uh, three people uh, last month, you know, and it was, you know, not for the sake of onboarding, but, you know, to actually, um, you know, fill the need, you know, that the organization had. I mean, we, we've been really, really blessed this year and, and we've helped other, you know, again, I mean, we've helped, you know, other companies ex- expand as well. So, I mean, it's been, it's, it's been much different than what I, what I planned, as I said originally, um, <laughs> but uh, it's it's been it's been great in, in a very different way than expected. 
Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I, I know that you are a fantastic leader. Um, and you are advanced in terms of like you shared, you know, with me, your mission statement, and I read it. Um, I don't think a lot of leaders slow down to figure out, you know, why did I pop on planet Earth? You know, why am I here? And I, I really think that you are a guy who is operating in his calling. Uh, and definitely, if you're creating jobs in such a crazy time like this. So, you know, I would like to know, since this is the Vibrant Leadership Podcast, Tell me what, how do you define leadership? What, what do you, when you sit down with a client, what do you guys talk about when you talk about leadership? You know, I, it's leadership has, has really become, I'm, I'm, I, I love the question. I mean, leadership is something that's really been uh, become something that's very important for me. You know, I, I um, realize, I guess, as, as, as I, <laughs> as I reach that second half of my life that, uh, you know, it's, it's, more than it's much more than a job you know it's it's a um you could call it a privilege but it's 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 in my opinion it's it's really a responsibility um we our job is to you know create a vision and our job is to share that vision and and, and help bring other people along you know I was, I was talking with my team the other day um and you know what, what something that's important to me is has always been accountability and i was telling my team that you know i want to do some leadership evaluation i want to understand from them you know their um their perspective of me and and what we can do and and so what i was telling them is that you know a big part of my job is not to be the boss but you know rather to empower them to do what they can do. I can't, and explain to them, I can't do their jobs. I can't do what everybody here does. You know, my job is, is to, is to really create that path, drive that path, bring everybody along, but, you know, empower everyone to do, do what they need to do. And, and that, I find that that's, I find those to be, you know, very, very important uh, components of, of leadership. Rick, you, what I heard you say is that your job is to cast the vision get the, the people in place, the who's in place that are going to carry out the work and then just get them equipped, which totally dovetails with your mission statement, which your three verbs are educate, equip, and inspire, which are, is your sweet spot, right? Like, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. <clears throat> yeah. So, so real quick, let's go down that bunny trail about casting a vision. You know, I think a lot of leaders are not sure what that looks like or what that process is. How, how do you cast a vision for your team? Because you said you are up to 19 people in your consulting firm. Is that correct? That That's is correct. That is fantastic. So, <laughs> so how, how does one cast a vision or get a vision? How do you do that? Oh, wow. Um, that's, 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 that's another great question. Um, I think initially uh, the the thinking, so initially the, th the thinking was uh, that I was going to simplify it, you know, and break it down to something very simple. You know, we, we create design, build extraordinary companies. And that was something that um, on the outset, you know, as, as words, I mean, it's easy to remember. It's like extraordinary. Okay. I get that, you know, but then the other piece of that is, is really living that, you know, and reminding them it's like, Hey guys, we're, we're set apart. You know, we don't do necessarily do things, you know, to just to do them. We do things to do a good job at them. You know, we are here to serve our clients, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, so, and so that really, um, you know, because that becomes part of our mantra, you know, be part of our conversation regularly, you know, it tends to stick, you know, and the team begins to look at things and do things in a way that makes them proud. So they're proud of their work, you know, and we talk about this, hey, you guys are doing a fantastic job. And, and this is important for them, you know, to, to let them know they're doing a good job, let them know there's a reason behind what they're doing, let them know that our clients are saying, hey, this looks great. This is, this is, this is great work. You know, and and so it's got to be more than just a just a conversation or, or a tagline. I mean, it's got to be something that you know that we live. And then you know, it was it was interesting. I had a conversation a couple of months ago with um, one of your one of your um, one of, one of your TED Talk alumni. Um, oh really? Who? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her name is uh, Nikimbo. Oh, that's uh, wonderful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh she's out of Canada, and, and she did a yeah, she did a talk. Um, it was a while ago. It was on casting a casting a, um, uh, a vision, or actually, like leaving a legacy. And so, you know, I'd, I'd watched her her video, and you know, it really it really connected for me. 
you know, it was like, okay, you know, we've, we've got this direction and, and we're going in this direction. Um, and then it came back to, you know, why this particular direction, you know, it's like, yes, it's, it's great to, you know, have that extraordinary mindset and to do things in that way, but there's gotta be a little bit more to it, at, le at least for me. And, you know, I, I had this whole, um, you know, regression, you know, I went back, you know, to when I was a little kid and, and which is kind of where the whole mission statement came from too, you know, it's like, what do I like to do? Um, and so, you know, there was this whole story about uh, me listening to this program called Unshackled and Unshackled was about people that, um, you know, came to know the Lord, you know, through, you know, horrible circumstances, you know, whether they're drug users or, you know, whatever it was. And so it was put on by this organization called Pacific Garden Mission. Pacific Garden Mission, you know, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Never been there, never seen it, but it just sounded cool. One day we were in Chicago and we happened to visit the Pacific Garden Mission, which was actually a mission, you know, homeless people and all that good stuff. It's like, oh, wow, you know. But, you know, the thing about it was, is that, you know, for whatever reason, I was just drawn to them. You know, I, I wanted to help. And then like through the rest of my life, you know, I've always done some sort of volunteer work and I used to work at missions and, and that sort of thing. And, and I realized, you know, through, you know, um, you know, my history, my pattern was to really help people to become self-sufficient, to be able to lift themselves up, to be able to live, you know, and, and if I look at, you know, the consulting business that we work with, you know, the, the idea isn't to work with big companies and, you know, that sort of thing. It's to help people uh, at their level be able to build companies that are sustainable, that are going to last. And so that's where the, the legacy, that's where the bigger vision came from. That's where the, hey, we want to create jobs. Hey, we want to, you know, do all sorts of things to, to help people be self-sufficient. Yeah. So I, I'm actually hearing that your vision is like twofold. It's for your own company and for all the companies that you work for. So you're leaving, living and breathing in both ways is what I'm hearing. So that is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And so this thing of the mission statement, everybody that we're talking about comes from the work uh, from a lady named Lori Beth Jones. And Lori Beth Jones is somebody I met way in the way, way back in 2007. And I got certified in a, a program called The Path and the Four Elements of Success. And I got to share those with Rick and, um, and he uh, actually became an affiliate for a little while with Lori Beth. And so we both would recommend the path. Would you recommend the path and the problem of success? Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely huge, beautiful tools that we have put in our toolbox. And I will, um, would you like to add anything about doing that mission statement work? I mean, I think that uh, in my life, you know, I'm on a mission to energize, impact, and influence people to lead a more vibrant life through engaging what is possible and making it probable. I mean, so this mission statement stuff, it's really important to me. And if you work the process, uh, as Lori Beth says in her book, it becomes kind of your harness and your sword, right? You know, so it harnesses you into the work you should be doing and it helps you cut off the things that aren't important, uh, which is a line right out of her book. So um, I absolutely adore it. So, so t you know, you're still using this, this mission statement. Um, what, what about with your teams? How are you using mission statements in addition to the visions that you cached? Well, the, 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 the interesting thing is that the, uh, those, those three, components the educated equipment inspire actually became part of our our kpis you know for the year you know and so each month i basically report to the team what we've done in each category or what we're doing in each category and you know again it's 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 about accountability um it's about leading the way it's like hey you know what we are you know developing a podcast we are um you know uh we took on interns you know, to, to help them, you know, give them, you know, a chance up. I mean, there, there were, there's been so many things that we've done this year, you know, just around those three areas. And, you know, we can, I continue the conversation, you know, and I, and again, I think it's important, you know, and, and I hope, I hope that, you know, we're, I'm, I'm leading the way that, you know, um, we're actually getting ready to do a workshop uh, in the next couple of weeks, just around, um, you know, personalities and differences in personalities, kind of going back to like the earth, wind, fire, water thing, right. um, which was cool, and relatable. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to, we're going on that path. Um, and the goal is, is to really help us, you know, to be able to gel and to understand each other more. But then the next phase after that is to understand ourselves, you know, a little bit more and, and, and kind of that why and, 
you know, it's, 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 I just find it so important. I find it so important to be able to be authentic, you know, when, when I, you know, essentially come to work, be able to, you know, be in my lane and other people understand, you know, what my lane is and, and they know where, um, you know, they, they kind of know where they fit into it, you know, how it all works together. I mean, that's, that's certainly the goal. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so y'all don't miss this. What Rick just said is that in his mission statement to educate, equip, and inspire, he's got some KPIs, right? Key performance indicators set up so that he knows whether or not he's doing his mission. So let's go down to the next question, uh, which is like, what are the skills of a great leader? So I'm hearing you say cast a vision, uh, you know, to again, equip and inspire, right? And educate your people. What What are the other skills that leaders really need to have? And when you go into a company, what do you see as most common? Like, what do you have to help people work on? You know, one, one, of, the, one of the things that I see, um, I mean, l- leadership, you know, just like anything else, it, it has uh, different levels of, of maturity or, or development, you know? So you, you go into a young company and, it, and sometimes, you know, it's, you, you've got the, um, the and forgive me, but you, you've got like the starry eyed leader and it's like, oh, we serve everybody and we're, you know, this and that and this and that. And you, you, you kind of listen and it's like, OK, this is this, this is great. I, you know, and, and so you encourage, you know, at that point and, you know, kind of have you thought about and what do you think about, you know, and, and so, you know, I say it to say, you know, one of the most important things about leadership is is listening, you know, and and being available to learn and, you know, not learning just from, you know, books and that sort of thing, but learn from what's going on around you. You know, the people that you're leading are going to give you information. You've got to be open um, to hearing what they're saying because they're going to have a different perspective and they're going to see things differently and they're going to have different conversations. Um, And on the other side of that, however, is is to communicate. You know, I've, I've seen where leaders have just gotten like really, really upset, you know, with their team. It could be on, you know, performance. It could be productivity. It could be, you know, any number of things. Right. And, you know, we get the leaders that, you know, that kind of blow up, you know, they, they just, you know, and so the team becomes afraid. I mean, I've, I've seen where, um, you know, employees were almost, almost crying, you know, leaving out of a meeting. And it's like, that was ineffective, especially six months later when the employee left, you know, which is, you know, which is the best thing that you want, you know, Um, you get the other leaders that just kind of like bottle things up and things don't get better. And and they kind of think that, you know, it's like, okay, well, maybe the next time they'll get it right. But if we, if we don't take the time to communicate, to educate, to help people, you know, really understand and, and even to help people's motivation, then, you know, we cannot be effective as leaders. You know, communication's got to be got to be a two way street. Um, we've got to take the time to teach people. You know, and and this is I, I know I said that as part of communication, but you know, our our people are really looking for us to to help develop them, to help them you know be better at their jobs because they've got to be confident in in what they're doing. You know, if they're not confident, they're not going to do nearly as good, and you're, we're not going to get as much of them from them. But the other thing is, is we have to be able to encourage people to, to just go and do what they do. You know, when we're controlling, when we're acting like, you know, the, the, um, micromanaging, hovering, exactly, hovering the helicopter manager. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) When we're doing that, we're, again, we're not getting what we can out of our team. You know, it's, it's interesting. We just did a, we're doing a a rebranding exercise. Um, you know, new logo and, and all that good stuff. Shh, don't tell anybody. Um, okay. And so this again a couple of months ago. And so they come up with a new logo and new colors and, and that sort of thing. And I didn't like them, you know, but I said, <laughs> but I said, it's like, you know what, you guys just do, you know, I'm, I'm probably too close to this, you know, to right, really. You started it when it was this big. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I, I stepped back and I let them make the decision and it's like, oh, I'm fantastic. Like, oh. but at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm looking at what's been produced and, and I'm blown away. You know, I let them drive it. I let them take, you know, responsibility for it. And they built something that's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I, I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't yeah. ask. For more. You just slayed it just now. So let's recap what you said. You said listening is really important. Then you expanded it to communication, Mm -hmm. right? You said it's a two-way street. Then third, you said, don't make your people cry. 
uh, you know, and don't, you know, go hold it all in, you know, and so I'm going to call that emotional intelligence. Leaders are not real familiar. I mean, it's out there. It's out there in the world, but I'm not sure like with like the small to medium sized businesses um, that that's as, you know, integrated as it needs to be the concept of emotional intelligence. And it's a two way street, right? So the people who are in fear don't say anything. They're not exercising it. And the one that made everybody sad, mad and unglad is not exercising the emotional intelligence. So I heard that. And then I also heard that you need to equip, which goes right back to your mission statement. So you're just so true to that mission statement. And, and you're right. You know, I have gone into organizations and were upset with people about why they did it. And I said, well, where's the procedure? You know, where, where is it in our system where it says you do this, then you do this, then you do, oh, we don't have that. Do we have formal training? No. So I think, you know, getting this education piece, you know, so Pete, you know, give me the tools to be successful is what I heard you say. So that is fantastic. That's fantastic. Okay. So what do you think makes a successful leader successful? Like, tell us a story. Maybe you've got a client um, that has just done so well. How did they, how did they do it? What did you coach them to do and what skills do they have that set them apart? I I think it's been, I think it's been the leader that was not so, let's let's say, driven to be successful, uh, no matter what the cost. You know, they were willing to take the time, take the steps to make the changes. You know, they were willing to listen. They were willing to grow. Um, They cast the vision, you know, to their team. And then again, you know, like we're saying, kind of empowering, equipping, equipping their, their teams to be able to, uh, to do their jobs, you know, um, instead of, uh, there were, instead of mistakes, so to speak, you know, they they were learning opportunities. There were opportunities to, you know, get in, do their job a little bit better. But, you know, the accountability is also with the leader to say, oh, as you were saying, you know, oh, I didn't teach you this, or I didn't communicate this effectively. Let's Let's work on that. Let, help me understand how I can do my job better. And so I, I think it really boils down to, to humility. And so, you know, being able to back back up, being able to slow down, being able to go forward, you know, in a, in a very regimented fashion allows them to grow, you know, relatively quickly, you know, pretty quickly and achieve, you know, achieve some of the goals they had. And then, you know, even expand on that. You know, I, I look back and, you know, I, I look at some of the things, you know, this person is doing, like, you know, I'm just seeing here and I'm, it's like, Wow! Wow! That is that is really they've really done some awesome things over the past. I don't know, it was uh, maybe ten years, you know. That's great. That's great. Well, I heard you say that this person has to be willing. You said the word willing. I know at least three times. We have to go back and replay it. But I know you said uh, you have to be willing to do this and willing to do that and willing to do this and that and the other thing. Absolutely. And I will tell you. Uh, and then you got to the word humility, right? Mm-hmm. And the thing about it is, is that, the, you know, willingness is a character trait. I tell people this all the time. And they're like, willingness is a character trait. I'm like, yes. And in fact, willingness is the most important character trait there is because you have to be willing to listen, as you say, willing to be courageous, willing to be, humi- you know, humble, all of these things. And so um, there's a great little book, another book for all of you listeners out there, write this down. Uh, The book is uh, How to Get Everything You Want by Mike Hernacki. And in that book, he talks about the concept of willingness. And so I adore this little book. It's, It's an old book, but it's still out there. You can get it on Amazon. And he says that willingness is the ability to do what needs to be done without reservation, hold on, without reservation, refusal, or judgment. Like this just needs to be done. So we have to get it done. So let's roll. You know, it's just this all in committed thing that you are talking about. So I think you're exactly correct. Um, And I love this idea of humility, which, you know, is like what they would call in Jim Collins book, good to great, you know, like a level five leader, you know, somebody that doesn't have the spotlight on them, that's putting the spotlight on the people and taking care of the folks. So see how smart Rick is, everybody. He's a very smart man. He should get smart about it. COVID is going on. And, you know, my question is, is what, what challenges do leaders face today? I mean, I think it's even, even more complicated right now. So 
What challenges are you seeing out there? And are you able to um, uh, have any strategies that help people overcome COVID and the things that are going on working virtual? What are you seeing out there? Well, I mean, you know, the, at the very basics, I mean, there, there was, there's, there's no rule book. You know, there's, there's no resource to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to go to this chapter. It's like, have you read this? And it's, it's not there, you know, and, and so we're going into this territory. This is where, this is a time when it is critical, you know, that, that we, we act as leaders because everyone is looking at us. You know, our, our staff, our employees, our team, they're like, I don't know what to do. You know, and they're seeing, you know, other companies laying people off, et cetera, et cetera. They want to know, you know, they want to know what they want to know what to do because they're they're dependent on you. You know, at the, at the same time, you know, your, your customers need to need to understand, you know, what's going on, what you're going to do, how you're going to, you know, adapt to, you know, take care of their needs. You know, if, if you're going to be there at all. Like, I mean, it's uh, it's a very, very important time for that. You know, and as a, as a business, I mean, we've got to be able to think. You know, think about the idea that, you know, the country closed down and then it opened and then things started closing down and then they sent the kids to school. And then, they, you know, and so every time something changed, you know, we had to think differently uh, about the company. I love that. Think differently. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And we, and we had to have multiple approaches. We had to be thinking through multiple approaches on, 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 on how to do things. You know, I, I talked to people you know, in the restaurant industry, you know, and, you know, obviously they had no business, you know, for, for a couple of months, what do you do? You know, and then business opens up, but the customers are still afraid to come back. What do you do? You know, employees are still afraid to come back. What do you do? You know, these are things that we have to, you know, as leaders, I mean, we, we, we can't necessarily prepare for everything that's happening, you know, but, it's about how, you know, and we, we've heard, you know, we've heard the cliche, you know, it's, it's about how we're handling things as we're going through them, you know, and, and we've got to be able to, to, to maintain um, our role and in, in our stature as leaders, because again, people are looking for us to make decisions, make decisions for them or that are going to, or that are going to impact them. So, yeah, yeah I would, um, I mean, it's, it's in my mind, you know, my mind is, is one where I'm saying we're always going to go forward. You know, in some way, shape, or form, we're, we're gonna we're gonna keep moving. Um, people are depending on us, and and we're gonna make that happen. Yeah. So here's what I heard him say right now. He he said you have to sit your fanny in a chair and stop and think about what's going on. You can't just get in the like what my daddy would call the swirl. You know, you can't get in the swirl. You can't you know let the you know stuff going on overtake you. You've got to get yourself in a chair and get strategic. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll, I'll tell you something that's happening here in Charlotte. One of my favorite places in uptown Charlotte is closing mm -hmm. and they sell, uh, it's a restaurant like you were talking about, and they sell a lot of breakfast items. Well, recently my daughter and I went to uptown Charlotte, stayed in a very nice hotel. And when we booked the reservation, nobody said to us, there will be no restaurant availability. There'll be no food service available in this hotel the whole time you're staying here. Like nobody told us mm -hmm. when we booked. And so we got there and we called and we said, we'd like to have some food. And they said, we don't have any food. You'll have to get Uber Eats or whatever to bring you some food. And we're like, okay, well, it's a pandemic. We'll be cool. No problem. So we, we call up this favorite place to see if they can bring Uber Eats to us and they're not participating in takeout. And I'm just like, what is happening? Like, <laughs> you, you take out. And, and like, they just, there's no, so we literally had to go to the convenience store and buy something to microwave. And we were like, what are we doing? But uh -oh. I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, there are strategies, there are things you can put in place. I even have seen where restaurants have decided to open during the pandemic. And they're doing takeout and doing amazing things. So it's about getting your fanny in the chair. That's what I heard you say. Is that what you said? Absolutely. You Absolutely. Said? <laughs> okay. Oh, here's, here's my <laughs> last question because I, I want to really serve leaders with this podcast. And so if you were listening to a single special listener right now and you were going to mentor them, you were going to mentor them, uh, give, give them a piece of advice. Give them the epiphany. That's the name of Rick's company, Epiphany, right? Okay. So, give them the Epiphany right now. Okay, like, here's what I want you to do for the next 
30 days or whatever, what would be your little mentoring thing that you would tell somebody, this is what you need to work on? You know, um, <laughs> let's see. I, I, I don't remember that question in the notes. Um, <laughs> it says, what, le what, what leadership advice would you give them is what it says. A single special or listener, what, what, what single piece of advice would you give them? I, I, I would say, I would say, and, and this is, you know, this is something that I feel like I've, I don't want to say perfected, but I would say that um, think about everything that you're going through, you know, be it the pandemic, be it, you know, whatever it is, as steps towards accomplishing the, the vision um, that you have for your company. You know, obviously, you know, in saying that it's important that you have a vision, but you know, it's it's like if you're focused on the vision, you realize that the 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 buffers and everything else are are they're they're just shaping you. You know, I mean, I think about you know 20 years ago. You know, I, I had a restaurant. This is this is a great story. Um, 20 I years. Hear ago, it. I want to hear it. <laughs> I, I I had a restaurant, and you know we're we're in the building phase, and you know I, I had um gotten some money from the small business development center, and you know. Uh, we're going through the process and halfway through we ran out of money. Now I was waiting for another check to come. Okay. But you know, the check wasn't there. Right. And all the guys that were building the restaurant walked off, the, walked off the job. Right. This cash, you know, and, <laughs> you know, and, and, and like you, you, you talk about a meltdown. You know what I mean? And it was, it was, it was tough. And of course, you know, we got the money, we, we brought them back. One of the most expensive pieces of the restaurant are, is a, uh, is the hood system, which is like the ventilation system that's, a, that's above the stoves. And so this space that we were building, working in had one in there. Okay. We couldn't get it to work. We're on the fifth floor of a building. Oh and we goodness. couldn't get this thing to work. Okay. Again, you know, it's, it's like, it's almost a meltdown. It's like, oh my gosh, you know what I'm saying? And so we went through progressive, you know, issues and, you know, it was, it was almost like the more I went through them, you know, the, the, the thicker my skin got, you know? And, and so I look back, you know, even with this company, you know, difficult times we've been through and, I, and I've grown and I've grown and I've grown. And, you know, so I see other business owners, you know, going through these, you know, through these challenges. And, you know, it's like, not only have I grown, but I'm able to coach them through. It's like, you know what, you're going to be fine. It's going to be tough for a minute, but you're going to get focus on where we're going. You know, don't get stuck right here. If you get stuck right here, you'll never get beyond that. So, you know, business owner, you know, I would focus on that. I would, I would, I would learn the vision. I would take on the mentality that everything that you're experiencing is part of what's going to get you to that end zone. And if you get stuck here, you'll never go forward. Yeah. I love what you're saying. So I, I'm hearing you say the creative tension zone, right? So it's like, <laughs> here's the vision. Here's where I am. And there is tension between where I want to go and where I'm at. And as long as I don't let go of the tension and quit, I'm going to make it right. So it's just Absolutely. learning how to stay in that creative tension zone. It's that healthy stress that builds the muscle that keeps the leader going. Okay. So Rick Meekins, it has been an absolute delight to be with you here on the Vibrant Leadership Podcast. And so here's how you can get a hold of Rick. Rick, what's the phone number we should call you if we want you to help us build our business and help us move forward, get a vision in place, mission statement. How do we do that? Um, well, my direct number is uh, 678-331-4162. Okay. And then how do they find you on the web? Give, and you need to spell out your name for your, <laughs> for your company. It's not epiphany like you spell it in the dictionary. So uh, give them your website. And, um, and then you're also on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. But here's the website. Okay. It's uh, spelled A-E-P-I-P-H. A N N I dot com. Yes, we're we're on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and we have a really cool Instagram. Um, if you're if you're into that sort of thing too. Oh, I am into that actually. I love right, Instagram. Right. I think it's fantastic. That's right? awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, it's been wonderful to be with you. I wish you so so good things over the next couple of months. And um, here's to 2021, where maybe we could get together and hug each other's necks. What about that? That would be oh, cool, man. right? 
All right, I'm coming to Woodstock, Georgia, where you hang out, which is near Atlanta, correct? Yes, uh uh-huh. Okay, all right, so I'll come to Hotlanta, you come to Charlotte, I'll see you in 2021, all right? Thanks so much. Thank you. To learn more, visit VibrantCoaching.com.